Hey, how's it going? That's gonna be a quick review of the uh, PC Cooler GI X5R. I recently picked this up uh, for about 16 bucks and would like to tell you why you should probably uh, sort of skip this one if you're looking to overclock as uh, that was the attentions I had for this CPU cooler, but unfortunately um, it just doesn't live up to the 160 watt uh, TDP that it uh, supports or that is rated for at least on the box. Now, overall first impressions of this thing are pretty nice. Uh, it's got a pretty bright and uh, vibrant uh, LED fan. Uh, it's 120 millimeters, P PWM controlled, and is generally silent uh, under full load. Taking a closer look at this thing, uh, it's pretty light. It's about 300 grams. Uh, and looking at the base, we find the uh, five copper heat pipes. Uh, and as you take a quick look, you can notice that two of them are only half size which is where much of the uh, CPU cooling performance, or lack thereof, uh, comes from. As if we take a look under the hood or this plastic cover, we find that uh, there's really only four heat pipes that come across each side of the, the CPU cooler. Which, while they're technically correct with marketing this as a five copper heat pipe design, uh, it is kind of a bit misleading. Uh, for reference, I'm using an i7-2600K. Uh, now this is an older CPU, but it, at 95 watt, uh, with a 95 watt TDP, uh, still it does produce a decent amount of uh, heat and still has great overclocking potential. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to utilize that as with this CPU cooler, I was only able to hit 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, here running at Cinebench R20, we see at 4.2 gigahertz, we're almost thermal throttling at temperatures at 90 degrees, which is not that good considering uh, I was using the same exact motherboard and CPU with a, co a Cooler Master 212 Evo and was seeing was able to hit 4.5 gigahertz at a uh, 70 degrees C. Uh, this isn't a comparison video, but just for some context at least. Now another little gripe about this CPU cooler is the actually the included thermal paste that, the, that it comes with. This thing is extremely cheap and I would highly recommend uh, switching out as soon as possible. Uh, I use this Arctic Silver 5. It's pretty cheap on Amazon and I noticed a 10 degree drop uh, immediately uh, after switching out that thermal paste. Uh, also another thing about this that just it, this thing just screams really cheap. I know you sort of get what you pay for but man like this thing is really really cheap. Um, is the the way the thing mounts uh, is it uses an AMD style uh, mounting bracket uh, with an Intel adapter that is uh, extremely similar to the uh, stock Intel heatsink. Now this makes it pretty uncomfortable or really uh, hard to mount the CPU cooler if you have sort of large VRM heatsinks like this motherboard right here. And unfortunately it just is not a very uh, easy to install. Uh, it's, it's not a very easy to install mechanism, uh, unfortunately. So there you guys have it. Uh, this thing definitely doesn't perform as good as it looks. And if you're just looking for uh, a modest upgrade over your stock in, uh, stock Intel or AMD heatsink, uh, I would recommend it as it can provide some mild overclocks, and it's a lot more it's a lot uh, more quieter than those stock variants. Uh, but on the other side, if you're looking to get some more cooling power out of your CPU to maybe overclock it a little bit for if you want to tinker more and you want to overclock with it. Uh, I would definitely take a look at either the Hyper 212 Evo or even the Gamex 400 as both of those come with better better thermal paste out of the box and will outperform this for around the same price uh, given uh, sales at the time. So anyway, those are my two cents on this thing. Uh, it definitely wasn't worth, I don't think it's worth the money unless you really like the looks of it, but hey, anyway. Uh, thanks if you made it this far. I uh, hope this is helpful, and hey, have a good one. Bye.